Hey everybody, Shadow Slick here. Welcome to my guide for Battle Chasers Night War. Notice there's a lot of uh, trophy guides out there for specific trophies, but not really how you should be approaching the game in general, and just just some tips and tricks to make the game easier for you instead of struggling and dying and all that stuff nobody likes. So, uh, getting started with the characters. There are six characters in total, though you can only see three there. The rest of them are in the inn. As you can see, you got uh, your starter, Gully, and Calabretto. They're with you from the beginning. Then you're introduced to Garrison, and the other three come later, Red, Monica, Nolan, and Alamon. So, in my experience, I thought that Gully, Calabretto, and Garrison were the best three by far, um, and I'm going to tell you why. Tell your friend. So, Calibretto, he's the only person that has a dungeon healing skill. So that means when you're in one of the eight main dungeons, you can actually heal yourself as opposed to just healing through leveling or through your skills. You can heal outside of battle, and that's extremely important. Moving on to his actual combat abilities, he has really strong healing abilities in general. Uh, for example, Healing Wave is quick and it heals for a lot. Uh, level 21 to put that into perspective, but he also has Gaia's Fist, which means you can just put this on a single target like a boss, and every time that target is attacked, your party will gain health. Whoever's attacking that target will gain health. So just extremely strong. Wildfire is also another one of his uh, like main skills. Uh, just craps out damage. Uh, you can see like this does 1,086. Uh, meanwhile, like a normal attack does 362, right? So if you take out the weaker guys and just have the boss left, then you're gonna be doing 1,086 damage as opposed to just your standard attack. Plus, when you combine these, the skill with the perks. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, menu ring is hard. So, Wildfire 2, you can now Sunder the enemies, or add the status effect Sunder, which means that they lose a little bit of armor. Uh, the burst ability is also really strong, a war machine. Uh, it's very similar to Wildfire in that it randomly attacks people, but when you're dealing with a single target like a boss, uh, 2,895 damage or just... Uh, Comparing it to the other guys, like 2,000, and uh, Garrison's is strong right now just because I have a good weapon on him, but it's it's very powerful compared to the rest of them. Moving on to Gully, uh, her shields are her strong point. So, for example, uh, with Barrier Swing, especially with the added perk onto it, uh, you convert 100% of the damage you do into a shield with the most damaged hero. So that just gives someone that extra protection. Now you can see Garrison has a lot less HP in my party, so it'll always go to him and protect him even though he has no stamina right now in his build. Uh, next, that makes it really important, is Guard. So you can protect everyone when you know a boss or a strong enemy is doing an attack that's going to hurt everyone. So this will reduce the damage by 22.5%. And there are extra skills you can get to uh, upgrade that as well. Uh, next, again, this is all for dealing with bosses, just because bosses are the hardest part of the game in general. Uh, Cripple, again, extremely powerful boss killer, deals, you know, whatever damage and weakens the enemy by reducing their attack power by 15% for two actions. So again, when you're dealing with a single target boss, this is just extremely strong and shouldn't be overlooked. Uh, her burst is also piercing, so that means you don't have to worry about armor. And her lower uh, two, second tier burst uh, can also stun all enemies. So that's extremely useful and you'll find yourself spamming it in the dungeon, especially in New Game Plus, where things are a little bit harder which is uh, currently where I'm at right now. Moving on to Garrison, I'd say he's the weaker of the three, so if you wanted to move people around, 
he's the person to change up. Uh, he's based on a high crit chance build, so you can see going to his perks. Uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with crit chance, crit damage, crit chance, crit damage, and uh, like even later on your leaves can crit, and uh, a lot of it's just based around crit. Uh, even Berserk increases the crit chance, um, and his uh, combat ability here. Uh, Berserk, if you hit it with a crit, then you gain an extra swing, so again, crit is just extremely important for this character. So one of the reasons I use Garrison is because of his uh, single target damage, which again is very boss focused, that's what I built my party on. Warblade is extremely strong single target, along with Berserk, what I mentioned here before. You can also set up your burst, your level 3 burst for the single target damage, by using Faint beforehand, which gives an increased 25% attack power for one action. And uh, if you're sundering the boss with Calibretto's Wildfire, or Goalie's Sunder ability, uh, which is just shatter. You can see uh, it makes them take 20% more physical damage for three actions. You combine Gullies and Calibretto's Sender abilities and then use Faint, well then all of a sudden your Blade Master is going to be taking down the enemy extremely quick. Alright, so moving on to general tips. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is buying after completing a dungeon. So in this game, there are eight different dungeons, Iron Outpost all the way to Mana Rips, and the shops reset after you beat each dungeon, so it's the perfect time to upgrade your equipment and uh, spend all that money. So the first shop that you should go to is over here, and just check to see. So since I'm not using uh, the magic guy, I don't even remember his name, uh, but so I'm not going to buy anything here. And for uh, Garrison, this is just too low. As you can see, I just have better stuff right now. And then moving on to armor. Uh, this is the only thing that uh, might be a bit better, but stamina is a lot worse, so it's not worth it. Moving on to this. Uh, my attack goes down by 22, but stamina goes up. Everything goes up, so this is worth buying. Yeah, right. Now, what I should have done there is check this shop first to make sure that there's nothing better. So we just have uh, pistols here, so that's not going to do anyone any good. And uh, we have the commander's garb for Gully, so that's totally worth it. But just making sure that there's nothing else worth getting right now, that is the case. So we'll buy commander's garb for Gully as well. Those are the only two shops worth checking for equipment. Uh, the rest of the shops don't really deal with equipment, so just make sure again to check them after completing every dungeon. Fishing is next on the list to talk about. Uh, when you're getting close to that end game, so finishing the 6th, 7th, and 8th dungeon, when you go to the collector, there's going to be something that appears in the fishing, and uh, instead of it being purple, it'll be orange, so that means it's legendary. And that's the stuff you're going to want to wait until that appears to buy. So once you have that, there's a place in the game that'll have all fish available. And that's important because one of the trophies is to catch every single fish uh, in the game. Um... We'll talk about this briefly. That blimp has the hardest boss on in the game, so I'm just gonna ignore it for a second here and go the long way. And apparently, uh, blimps are just all over the place right now. Jeez. All right, so making it all the way up here is where you should be doing your fishing. 
And when you're entering places like this, uh, this is my worst uh, the thing I dislike most about the game is the long load times for places, but besides that, everything is absolutely great. Uh, even this one isn't loading too long because it is a smaller area. So, there are four locations to fish here. Number one, number two, number three way up here. And number four over here. So every time you fish, uh, you might not get things you want, sure, but you just have to keep doing it. And then to reset these locations, you just need to rest at the inn, and then uh, all the fish will be replenished. And once you finish fishing here, you can go here. And there will be the option to trade in the fish that you have, and you'll get shadow coins in return. And I'll talk about what you can use those shadow coins for in just a second here. So just to talk about fishing uh, again briefly for a second, this is where you change your fishing equipment in the menu. And on the right side, it's your fishy area. You can see everything that you need to catch or still uh, have caught. It'll be black if you haven't caught it yet, so uh, you'll just see the outline there. But you need to catch at least one of everything to get one of the trophies. Now, the shadow coins that you get from trading your fish in or trading other items in can be spent at the collector. I already went over buying weapons and armor, but make sure you can also get uh, accessories here as well. I'll probably be buying the Basilisk Stone uh, once I get enough shadow coins. So, uh, all of this stuff is decent, but uh, where you're only wanting to pay attention to is the Lesser Tomb of Knowledge and the Lesser Tomb of Potential. So, there's a limited amount of Lesser Tomb of Potentials. So you want to buy these uh, because they're only 15 Shadow Coins. Uh, wait until the end of the game, or they're not a high priority. Uh, also, buying the one specifically for the characters you have in your party, namely uh, Garrison, Calibretto, and Gully, along with the minor team of potential. These are all cheap. And then uh, as soon as you run out of the limited ones, as these you can only buy five of each, then you'd have to go back to the minor team of knowledge or the lesser team of knowledge, which will give, which I personally prefer since you're getting three perks instead of for 25 instead of one perk for 10 so overall it's a better buy there's also a couple quest items that you'll need to buy uh, this outro there's also an intro and a chorus and that's part of the quest but uh, I'll provide a link in the description for more specifics to the game as opposed to general tips uh, the fairly dignified top hat is also for a quest and then buyback and all the items, not as important. So, uh, there's also costumes you can buy. And that's also important for a trophy. So, they don't appear there. What do you need? But you can see that when I'm going to choose my party members, they already all have them with their appearance. I can press triangle to change their costume. Each of the costumes are 100 shadow coins each, so they are very expensive. Uh, one option is to buy, save up 600, and then buy all of them at once, and then just reset your save so you still have 600 shadow coins that you can spend for uh, getting perk upgrades or equipment or things like that. So that's one way to do it, but I had shadow coins out the wazoo, so I just ended up purchasing all of the costumes for everyone anyway and not worrying so much about the perk upgrade side of things. Now I'm going to briefly talk about missables, which thankfully in this game there are not a whole lot of. The only thing that's missable is just in the bestiary. So once that loads here, now you can see mine is mostly filled out, except for one guy right over here. And that is the Shade of Belavros. 
so early on it's a optional mini boss encounter in the iron outpost so it's the first dungeon you go to and you need to find a ornate sarcophagus uh, it's just in a dungeon it'll make noises as you approach and you need to refuse to help them and he'll attack you and uh, if you don't do that you'll miss getting out on this guy but thankfully there is new game plus for you to get the option to take him on Now I'm going to talk about what to do once you've actually not so much beaten the game, but you're one boss away from beating it, and what you should be doing before starting New Game Plus. So step one, if you haven't already, get all the legendary weapons. You'll find all of the recipes in one location in the Winter E area. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, step two, complete all of the fishing. That'll get you those fishing trophies, plus it'll get you a bunch of shadow coins for the costumes, the quest items, and to get up those extra perk points. Number three would be cleaning up the bestiary. So you want to make sure that you have all of this filled out if possible. I know, like I said before, I'm still missing the Shade of Belavros, but uh, you're going to want to get all of these done. Uh, on that note, you are going to need to level up the other characters that you're not using in your party. Uh, just to get these, so you can see that uh, I have the shades of each character on here. In the Mana Rifts, you'll have to use those three characters to be able to fight their shade, if that makes sense. So, what I recommend doing is going back to all the other dungeons on Legendary difficulty once you've beaten them, and have the Legendary weapons that you can equip on your low-level characters and then get all of the lore inside the dungeons as well as you're going through them for a second time. Also increasing the uh, amount of kills you get on each guy. Kills you get on people are important because they'll buff your character. As you can see here, 100 enemies from the mana rifts for defeating, sorry, defeating 100 enemies from the mana rifts gives all of my heroes 2% attack power. But uh, if I kill one more vampire, then I get another 2%. Uh, attack power for all my heroes. And this goes on for all of these guys. They all have a little bit of a beast perk to them. And a lot of them are the same. Since, like, defeat 100 life slots, all the life slots are going to have that same uh, beast perk. But they are important to do. Uh, for example, if you're going to Strong Mont and you beat 100 enemies at Strong Mont, all of a sudden you're going to be gaining 10% more experience each time you do a fight. And that's extremely important in New Game Plus, since you're decently underleveled for the whole game, unless you have a perk like that, or you're just fighting more often than you need to be. So, lore is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you're going to be finding them in the dungeons. Uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's hard, but it does take time to find all of the messages. I'll just outline everything that exists right now since I already have the lore trophy. But uh, finding all the lore also gives you uh, different rewards, and those are always nice to have too. Also important, I was talking about the level 3 burst before when you're fighting. Uh, you're going to want to get those for everybody, that's another trophy. So, uh, like Time Machine, or, uh, time Warp is one of the ones for uh, Nolan. That one is based around lore, but for the most part, I, if you have any issues with them, then uh, I'll post a link, like I said, to a guide in the description. One of the other things I'm going to talk about is my current perk setup. So with Calibretto, I have 173 points, which is probably more than you'll have for a long time. I like getting permanent stat boosts, as well as boosting uh, skills that I like using a lot. So for example, Wildfire. Uh, Wrathful Opener is also really strong to uh, increase crit chance by 50% for the first use, which if you're using Wildfire or Calibretto's level 3 burst is extremely strong. And just making sure to get all of the attack power boosts as well as uh, Shifting Tides is pretty nice to get me over the 100 point uh, requirements get rising power and it also boosts my heals if I'm doing an attack and I always always start off with an attack because of wrathful opener 
moving on to Gully, I made sure to have 100 so I'd have Fortress, uh, which is just useful for those longer boss fights. Uh, boost up your physical and magical defense each time you attack. Up to six times. So again, crit chance, haste, and uh, jab is her normal basic attack, so increasing that is great. And then just building your strength up, again, perfect for boss fights. And uh, backlash, meh, not really the greatest, I was just looking to get it all the way to 100. I might think about switching it to Avenger and uh, something else really, like maybe Scattershot. But I don't use Scattershot, so it's kind of tricky. Uh, but the main reason I picked this was because it did make it a perfect 100, otherwise I don't think Backlash is that useful. I don't think Gravity Punch is that useful as well, since I'm more focused on putting up shields, which you can see here in my Barrier Swing upgrade. Uh, defensive Start is also pretty nice if you have the extra points kicking around. But then you start getting things like Resilient and Stamina upgrades. And since Gully has the Taunt ability, which means you can force people to attack her, having all of the extra armor, magical defense, and extra stamina is extremely useful for tanking those shots. Uh, moving on to Garrison, a lot of it is based on uh, getting the extra crit percentage and crit damage, because uh, that compounds really well with Berserk, and uh, that's really the main reason. Uh, going on to the other side, uh, just getting the extra overcharge is really good for uh, Warblade, though I might get this one yet still. I just thought the other ones were a little bit more useful at the time, but uh, to each their own, right? I'll make sure I'm using all of my perk points right now. I don't think a lot of these are too useful, like 25% or 25 overcharge would be nice, but if you've killed an enemy, you need to time it, so uh, Garrison's the one killing him, and it's just a lot of extra timing that's not really too important just to get 25 overcharge. Uh, what I would be looking to get next is Blood Wounds or Bloodthirsty, most likely Blood Wounds. Uh, or, uh, I combine the two Deep Wounds. But you gotta think that Bloodthirsty you would grab the extra overcharge for the Warblade, so uh, at this point it's each your own. You just gotta make sure that you're not going too much over, because uh, you wanna make use of the Mastery Tree. So right now, if I had an extra 4 points in Wanderer, then I would be able to get the Wanderer overcharge and just get the extra Dungeon Perks. Not Dungeon Perks, uh, Extra attack power for turn overcharge, which when you're using, again, things like Warblade, then all of a sudden you're doing a ridiculous amount of damage. So if I wanted to, I could switch things up and do a completely, slightly different build and do Warblade, Swordsman overcharge, make sure I had this perk, and then all of a sudden I had Warrior or Wanderer overcharge in there as well, and I'm doing a ridiculous amount of damage with all the extra overcharge ability with Warblade. So besides perks, there are other things in the game. Uh, I definitely recommend exploring as much as you want. Like I said, there's only the one missable, and that has to do with the Shade of Belarus, so uh, you might as well just have fun and explore and don't follow guys too closely. One of the things you will need to do to get 100% in this game is to do every single hunt. Since I'm on New Game Plus, I don't really have a whole lot of these done, and I don't really care Son, to. Careful out there. Uh, you do get decent stuff from it. Uh, that'll get you shadow coins or just uh, nice uh, like necklaces or weapons or things like that, so I definitely recommend doing it if it's your first playthrough. There's also the arena, and you'll need to completely beat this if you want to get uh, one of the legendary weapons. Are you ready? Uh, if you view the rewards, go all the way to the bottom here. Uh, Desecrated Soul Shard, a Gold Emblem Victory, blah 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 blah. You're gonna want this stuff if you're taking on the harder bosses in the game. 
But uh, you're also going to need this one to create one, one of the legendary weapons like I took before, so... Uh, check this out once you've hit level 30 and have at least a couple of legendary weapons that you can use in these fights. Are you not entertained? Uh, you can see that the Elise is level 25, so if you're level 30 you shouldn't have too much of a problem taking this stuff down. Here to test enough talk. Alright, so that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, Battle Chasers Night War. Uh, it is a long platinum. I'm probably looking at 60 hours by the time this is all done. Uh, but it's pretty fun, and... Uh, like, it's not really... Uh, what's the word? It doesn't take up a whole lot of your mind, so... Like, for example, I ride uh, my exercise bike when I'm doing this just because I don't need to be extremely focused. So, because of that, it's like the game I play when I'm exercising, which is pretty sweet. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully you guys like this video. It's the first one I've done where it was just kind of a long talk about what you can do in this game. Uh, so I'm interested if you guys want to see more like this. Uh, just give me a shout in the comments below. And, uh, you know, if you liked it, definitely put a like there, subscribe, all that stuff. So thanks again for watching, and I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your day and check out the rest of my videos. Thanks.